ओके सो चैप्टर नंबर वन स्टार्ट विद वेरी बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ फिजिकल क्वान्टिटी ओके एज यू जस्ट टोल्ड मी एनीथिंग दैट कुड बी physical my writing is really bad so just you have to go up with that uh physical quantities is divided into two section base quantity and derived quantity these are not the direct topics that we are that we are going to have in our exam but the knowledge of these is very important whenever there would be a question to understand what he is actually trying to ask okay so the base quantity are the quantities which could be measured directly and drive quantities are the one which depends on other quantities for their measure hello assalamualaikum wali okay so we have physical quantities the ones which anything that we could measure in physics is the physical quantity they are further divided into two sections base quantities and drive quantities base quantities are the one which could be measured directly and drive quantities are the one which depends on other quantities for the measure uh there are seven quantities that we could measure directly okay mariya which one are those which quantities are the base quantities mariya response temperature and intensity of light these are the seven quantities which we can measure directly in physics okay out of them these quantities we are going to study approximately in every chapter and these two hum isko apne is syllabus ke andar we don't discuss them okay and they have okay. respective units whenever we are going to do the calculations we have to make sure or we need to convert the units to these units in order to solve the question mass is normally oh. taken in kilograms time is taken in seconds length Second. is taken in meters current is taken in amperes amount of substance mole and temperature the kelvin and intensity of light is kelvin so we are going to focus only on those quantities which we are going to deal in this syllabus okay uh so sir right... for temp it's uh, kelvin not celsius kelvin yes base okay. unit is kelvin okay so the derived quantities are the one which depends on other quantities for example you must have studied density in previous class okay okay in order to get to Wait. density we need mass and volume okay yes suppose weight for weight we need mass and gravity for force yes. we need mass and acceleration yes. for velocity Pressure. we need distance and time so all these quantities which depends on other quantities are known as derived quantities and the base ones are the one written in front of you then comes three very important things while doing the calculations and those are scientific notation significant figure and prefixes okay scientific notations are basically you might have studied as mujhe bachche naam bata bhi rahe the unhone padha hua tha i don't know but scientific notation is to write a number in the power of tens okay uh, standard form standard, standard form. form yes yes thank you standard form just skip that off. then the significant figures are to how much figures we write the answer 
Yeah. Suppose if we are getting an answer as twelve forty eight point nine eight six. Seven. How many significant figures do we have? Seven. Seven significant figures. And if I convert this into power of ten, it would be it would become one point two into ten days to power four. Four. So from here we make a theory that whenever we move the decimal backwards. We get a positive power of 10. Whenever we move a decimal forward, we get a negative power of 10. Yes. Okay. Up now, I have reduced this whole big number to just two significant figures. This is the this is something that you need to keep in your mind whenever you're writing your answer to the answer sheet or to the section where the answer should be written. You must squeeze the figures to maximum two or three or even one figure. Okay? So significant oh. figure is basically to what figures we need uh, write our final answer. Power of 10 is basically whenever we move the decimal backwards, we get a positive power of 10. Whenever we move the decimal forward, we get a negative power of 10. How many figures do we move? Depends on the Four. prefixes, which is going to the, uh, which which will be our next topic. Take it. Prefixes, you must have studied a few prefixes in uh, up till now. And starting with, we have centi, milli, oh, micro, okay. nan, no. and pico. Pico is basically represented as small p, small n, Small m, mu. sorry, 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 mu. sorry, mu. Milli is m and centi is c, and the respective powers are 10 to the power of minus 2, 10 to the power of minus 3, minus 6, minus 9, and minus 12. So, whenever we need to round off a number to the scientific notation, we try to reach to these of the prefixes which we possibly closest mil round. Positive power mein humare paas kya jata hai? Kilo, power of 3, mega, capital M, and giga, giga which is 10 to the power of 9. Usko hum capital G se. Achha. Now, there are some unit convenience bhi aa jati hai. Theek hai? For example, if I want to increase the power of negative power from 10 to the power of minus 2 to the 10 to, to the power of minus 3, all I need is to move the decimal 3 points further or forward. Whenever I need to increase the power of Positive power, I need to move the decimal backward. How many decimals do I need to move backwards, Munib? Uh, to get what? Uh, to... From 4 to 6. From 6 to 4, right? 4 to 6. 2? Yes, because the difference is 2. Uh, this, arrow, this arrow indicates the decimal movement. Not 10 to the power of 6 to 10 to the power of 4. As we have studied, whenever we need a positive power, we move the decimals backward. So if I want to increase the positive power, I would move the decimals to the difference between the two powers. And same goes for the negative powers. Okay? For example, I have 2 centimeter and I have to convert into millimeter. Centimeter has a power of minus 2, millimeter has a power of minus 3. Decimal kaha move hoga, Ahmed? Uh, centimeter to millimeter. To Just 20. tell me where would where would I move the decimal? Forward or Forward. backward? So it Forward. would become 20 millimeter. Yes. That's the shortest route we uh, reach, uh, we uh, adopt in order to get the convenience of the units. Okay? Similarly, if I want to go from 
वन किलोग्राम अच्छा एक वन वन मोर थिंग के अगर हम लोगों ने ड्राइव यूनिट से बेस यूनिट में जाना है आई ओनली नीड टू राइट द पावर ऑफ द पी फिक्स सो वन सेंटीमीटर इक्वल्स टू हाउ मेनी मिलीमीटर टेन टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस टू मीटर ठीक है वेन एवर वी आर गोइंग टू अ बेस यूनिट फॉर एग्जाम्पल किलोग्राम्स और वट्स एवर जो भी है हमें नॉर्मली उनका डिफरेंस लिख देना होता है या जस्ट प्रीफिक्स की जो पावर होगी विल सिंपली राइट द पावर ऑफ द प्रीफिक्स एनी क्वेश्चन अप टिल हेयर नो नो मरियम आर यू इन द क्लास या आई डोंट हैव एनी क्वेश्चन ओके सो these are the basics that we need to understand before getting into chapter number 1 theek hai so ab measurements mein hum log jab aate hain straight away the very first thing that we need uh, we discuss is how to take length how to measure length length ठीक है व्हाट पॉइंट्स डू वी नीड टू कीप इन आवर माइंड इज फर्स्ट इज द ऑब्जेक्ट शुड बी अच्छा लेंस को मेयर करने के लिए वी हैव टू ऑपरेटर्स व्हाट व्हाट आर दोस मीटर रूल एंड मीटर टेप रूलर फॉर शॉर्ट लेंस एंड टेप फॉर लॉन्गर और बिगर लेंस the very first point is the object should be straight second is the edges should be properly cut or sharp hone chahiye so hamari initial and final position kya ho always correct ho third point is it should be placed closer to the object closer to the ruler sorry and last is view hamara kya hona chahiye what is uh, parallax error parallax error is basically when you're not like when your eye is not directly to the point like the measuring perpendicular perpendicular to the perpendicular instrument to the or to the apparatus theek hai so our view should be perpendicular in order to avoid parallax error theek hai now these are the rules that we go for a shorter length or regular shaped object what if we have an irregular shaped object for irregular shaped object any any ideas What do we do for irregular shaped object? We take a string. उसके साथ साथ, for example, if this is the this is the object, ठीक है? I would put the string side by side to this one, like this, up till here, and now I will straighten this string, put it across the meter rule. and would measure the length theek hai or i have a circular object like this i would wrap the string around this one okay i would go three to four turns to the string and again i would measure the length of the string now how many turns do i have taken supposedly if i have taken four turns so i would divide the total length with four four that would give us a circumference of the circle circle can you know, whatever the cylindrical object or for so for so whatever the shape okay okay yes then there is a very common question that we will get in the exams instead of taking measurement for 
one object, we take multiple of it. When Suppose small... I need to I need to find out the volume of a ball. Okay, I would take a cylinder, I would put some water into it. Yeah. Instead of putting one ball, I would put five balls carefully into it. I would look for the rise of volume. Suppose initially it was 10 centimeter cube. Now it's 30 centimeter cube. So what will be the volume of ball? 20 centimeter. 20 centimeter cube with, with the volume of how many <laughs> balls? Five divided by five. So in order to find the volume of one ball, I would divide it with five, five. and I would five. get the... Why do we do this? What is the reason of doing this? Uh, to make sure. To avoid any kind of error. Okay? Yeah. And well, secondly, it gives us accurate results. Error-free results. Similarly, if we have 500 sheets of paper. I need to measure the thickness of one sheet of paper. I would take the length of 500 sheet. Suppose it's 7 centimeter. And we divide it with 5. five. To get five. the thickness of one sheet of paper. There would be certain questions. Where you have this concept put in. Hoga. Suppose if I have a ruler. I have 5 balls placed side by side onto the ruler. It starts from 2 and ends on 19. What would be the length of it? 17, 17 divided by 5. Divided by 5. This would give us a circumference of 1. one ball. Similarly, if I go to the time, I need to find the time for one oscillation. You take you take the time of multiple oscillations and then divide it. With the number of oscillations. Yeah. I'm impressed by the way. Who is continuously answering? I should make him my star student. Who is answering? Don't be shy. It's me. <laughs> I don't know who me is. I need to... Uh, memorize the voices I, I, I said in the beginning of the class. Uh, Munib. Achha, I thought you said me. I, I didn't heard the word Munib. Achha, this is the this is called the amplitude. The maximum displacement of the of pendulum. Okay. When I Take this pendulum to this position and release it from here. When it will come back to this position, that would be considered one oscillation. But instead of taking one oscillation, I take multiple oscillations and time it. Suppose I get 20 seconds for 30 oscillations. So I'll divide 20 with 30, 30. to get the time period for one oscillation. By the way, what is this method called? This one? The volume one. What do we call this method? What do we call this method? Anyone? Mariam, what do we call this method we, where we find the volume of an unknown object? I think volume method. No. Displacement method. Displacement method. Very good. It is used to find out the volume of the unknown object. Achha, time period depends on what factors. You said the method is called what? Time period depends on what factors. Do you recall this formula? 2 pi under root L over G 
so the time period of a simple pendulum directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the gravity so if either of the length or the gravity is changing only then the time period would be affected otherwise if if the examiner asks what if i increase the amplitude instead of this to this position would it affect the time period yes because it's the length no no to this position no. only the oh. position the position only if i change the displacement only or if instead of using this i use bigger ball would it affect the time period no why is that because we yeah. just discuss it only depends on the length, length this length or the value of gravity if either of it is not changing it would not affect the time period okay clear yes and the last topic density <laughs> we start we discuss that at the very beginning of the lesson what is density density, density is given mass. as yes mass over so volume. volume how do we measure mass <laughs> anyone uh, volume ayan plan. ayan how do we measure volume measure volume by I am uh, asking. Did I ask mass? Ah, uh, sorry. I was. I. I mean, how do we measure mass? How Anyone? My mass is density multiplied by volume. No, 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 no. Over volume. No, I just need to measure the mass. Why would I use the formula? I need to find the oh, density. Oh, okay. So you can. I need to measure the mass first. A scale or like a weighing machine. Yes. We call it physical balance. With the help of physical balance, we will measure the mass. And how would we measure the volume? By displacement method. When do we use displacement method, Mariam? When do we use the displacement method? Um, is it like to find the volume? Why do we use displacement method for that? Why can't we simply go for length, time, because base, time, height? The shape is the shape has an yes. irregular. Yes, displacement mm -hmm. method is mostly used for irregular regular shape. Regular shapes. Object for regular shape object, we will simply use the formula length uh, into base length. into height. There's another formula. Volume is equal to area into height. There would be some question there where you need to apply this concept as well. They would give you the area. They would give you the volume. Okay. And they would ask you to find out the thickness of the object. So we'll simply divide volume with the area. We'll get the thickness of it. Or length or whatsoever they have asked. you They would give you the volume. They would give you the area. And you will divide it to find out the third quantity Hi. what are the base base units of volume meter yeah. cube and meter for cube. area is meter square. meter square we only need to convert these units only if they have asked us to convert it when normally if mass is given in grams and volume is given in centimeter cube the formula or the unit for density would come out to be grams per Gram centimeter per cube, centimeter cube. But if they have given us the mass in kilograms and volume in centimeter cube, then we need to convert it. Or we can be careful in writing the units as kilogram per centimeter cube. Okay. Otherwise, keep this in mind. There is a direct relationship. One meter is equals to, sorry, one, uh, 
1 cm is equals to 10 mm 1 cm square is equals to 100 mm square and 1 cm cube is equals to 1000 cm cube because this power is telling us to move the point further more it's centimeter we we have just studied it ke humne bilkul start mein bhi kiya tha in order to go from centimeter to millimeter i would just move the decimal forward what if it's square or cube so i need to move the decimal twice and thrice when it's square and cube okay mm -hmm. Because it's basically one centimeter into one centimeter. Na? This would give us one yeah. centimeter square. Na? So if it's one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter, this also 10 millimeter. So this would give us 100 millimeter square. 100 yeah. millimeters. Okay. And so forth and so on. So the power also tells us that how, to what extent we need to increase the power or multiply the power. Okay. Okay. Let me take you to the book and let's see if there is if that book is still open. Oh, it's So when it comes to length, this 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 is the first thing that we discussed. Okay, हम लोगों ने क्या करना है? Object should be placed in a straight line, no. properly cut, closer to the object, view perpendicular. Whenever we need to calculate the thickness of one sheet of paper, instead of 500, we would take, sorry, instead of one sheet, we would take 500, 500 sheets and would divide it with the, whatever the length is. In, in, in this particular case, it starts from 8, ends at 12. So four the difference is 4, 4 divided by 500. When it comes to volume, there is another point we missed, uh, sorry. Uh, whenever we need to measure the volume, we have to take into account that the measuring cylinder should be three to four times bigger than the object. And always look for the lower meniscus. This one. Okay. This is the meniscus. So we need to look the lower meniscus. This would be the initial volume. Measuring cylinder should be three to four times bigger than the object. So either we can go for the rise of volume or we could simply subtract final from initial volume. Either case, we'll get the volume of the object. There are certain parameters that we need to keep in our mind that we object not throw the object into the water. That in that case, it would splash and some of the volume would be lost. So everything should be handled carefully. And the object whose volume is to be measured only when that object is placed into the measuring cylinder, that would be considered the final volume. Before putting that object, no matter how many objects is placed into the measuring cylinder, that would be considered as the initial volume. Okay. Okay. Then density, density of formula, their units, it could be kilograms. D is for decimeter. Deci means 10 to the power of minus 1. Deca is 10 to the power of positive 1. You do not need to write uh, uh, memorize the densities of the object. You need to write the whole theory. If, if the examiner asks, you find out the, how would you find the density of an object? What would be our uh, points? What is the first thing we need to do? Measure the mass. The mass. And, and, and then the mass with the help of physical balance. We have to be elaborate. Uh, First of all, okay. we'll measure the mass of the object with the help of physical balance. 
then we would measure the volume of an object. If it's a regular shape, we would go for length, base, and height. If and if, if and it's irregular object, we would simply do the displacement the method. So we have to describe our methodology. Yes. This is one of the favorite question of examiner. They mostly ask either to find out the density of the object, or they could ask you to find out the uh, time period of a simple pendola, or they could ask you to find out the thickness of a sheet. Normally, it comes off three to four marks. So we just have to explain. Yes. Understood. And it's always better to write in terms of points. This was the thing that I was telling you that this is the length of the object since starting from here and ending at the center of the bob. This would be considered as the length. And the time period, you do not need to memorize this formula. Just you need to keep this in your mind that the time period of a simple pendulum depends only on the length and the gravity. So if the length and gravity is the same, then the, it doesn't matter. There would be no change in the pendulum, uh, the okay. time period of the pendulum. Okay. Do I need to explain what oscillation is? You all have studied the definition of oscillation in the previous class. What is well, oscillation? Back. It's a two and four motion of an right. object. Take it. Okay. If there is anything you need to ask, go ahead. Now is your time. No. Anyone?